Water is the molecule that supports all life. With its properties, it functions as an integral component of all scales of biological systems, from a single cell to the entire biosphere. Hydrogen and oxygen are the two atoms that together form the water molecule, which takes a bent shape. Because of the great electronegativity difference between hydrogen and oxygen, the molecule is polar, with hydrogen having a positive charge and oxygen having a negative charge. This results in strong intermolecular forces called hydrogen bonds. In hydrogen bonding, the charged regions of a polar water molecule attract to oppositely charged regions of neighboring molecules. Many properties of water are results of these interactions. For example, water's cohesive behavior. Hydrogen bonds hold water molecules together, giving water a tendency to stick to itself. This is also the reason for water's great surface tension, which is a measure of how difficult it is to break the surface of a liquid. Molecules of water along the surface are pulled down because of hydrogen bonding, creating a tension at the top. So how does water's cohesion property contribute to biology? One example is rain. Water falls in droplets because of cohesion and surface tension. Without this property, rainfall would have a very different appearance. Cohesion also allows water to be moved along a pathway and still stick together with ease. One example of this is the circulatory system. It is essential for blood plasma, which is 90% water, to stick to itself as it is pumped throughout the human body. Capillary action in plants also involves cohesion because as water evaporates from a plant's leaves, hydrogen bonding pulls up water molecules through water conducting cells all the way from the tree's roots. A similar property of water is adhesion, which is the clinging of one substance to another, like dew on grass. Adhesion, like cohesion, plays a part in capillary action by allowing water to cling to xylem tissue. This adhesive property works against gravity to transport water up the plant. At the cellular level, adhesion allows hydrophilic organelles to travel smoothly through the cytoplasm, which is mostly water. Without adhesion, Moving organelles would not be suspended in a cell. Certain desert lizards use this property too. The Australian thorny devil lizard and the Texas horned lizard have tube-like channels under their scales which funnel water into their mouths. Adhesion keeps the water on their bodies. A high specific heat and a high heat of vaporization are additional characteristics of water. Specific heat is the amount of energy needed for one gram of a substance to change one degree Celsius in temperature, and heat of vaporization is the amount of energy needed for one gram to change from liquid to gas. Because heat must be absorbed to break hydrogen bonds and release to form hydrogen bonds, water can absorb or release a large amount of energy without changing much in temperature. This property is very important in evapotranspiration, where the movement of water from land surfaces or plants into the atmosphere. Water's high heat of vaporization helps moderate the Earth's climate. A large amount of solar heat is consumed with evaporative cooling, in which the warmest molecules in a body of water vaporize, leaving most of the water cool. Similar processes are evaporation of water from plant leaves and evaporation of sweat from human skin, both of which keep the organism from overheating. A fourth property of water is its change in density upon solidification. Unlike most substances, water expands in volume as a solid, resulting in floating rather than sinking ice. So why does ice float? Again, hydrogen bonds. When water freezes at or near zero degrees Celsius, hydrogen bonding arranges the molecules in a tetrahedral crystalline structure, which leaves some extra space. More space with the same mass allows ice to float a fact that is very significant. Because ice floats, the surface of Earth's many bodies of water freezes first. This frozen layer insulates the water below, preventing ponds, lakes, and even oceans from completely freezing. As for marine life, this layer also protects underwater communities from the extremely cold surface. It just so happens that many organisms also make the permanent ice biome their home. Residents of the Arctic and Antarctica range from penguins and fur seals 
to bryophytes and algae to narwhals and polar bears. Last but not least, water is often called the universal solvent because it can dissolve so many substances, though it cannot dissolve everything. With its hydrogen bonds, water surrounds the solute and attracts it away from other solute particles, often creating a hydration shell around each dissolved particle. Many biological molecules, like sugars, amino acids, nucleic acids, and proteins, can dissolve in water. This allows for efficient transport of nutrients throughout the body via the circulatory system. Water can act as a solvent for biochemical reactions in the cell and help transport ions like calcium and sodium that go in and out of the cell. On a larger scale, an entire oceanic ecosystem depends on water's ability to keep oxygen and nutrients dissolved. Without water as the solvent, marine life would not be able to obtain the oxygen and nutrients necessary to survive. In conclusion, these five properties, cohesion, adhesion, high specific heat and high heat of vaporization, lower density as a solid, and versatility as a solvent, make water an essential substance for life. And she fights for her life as she puts on the coat And she fights for her